Hi there, this is Nick broadcasting on the Get Me Off Grid video blog. I have here in this particular pack, can't see it, it's still wrapped in cardboard, it's the flux pen, the tabbing wire, solder, and I have here right in front of me something that provides me with a great deal of excitement. This is the solar cells. 800 grams, that's the quantity I went for, capable of producing substantially over 200 watts worth of electricity. These are broken solar, pels, uh, solar cells, which I can reassemble. The thing which is frightening is that they are brittle as crazy, and I don't know whether you can see that. They're as thin as paper. Alright, so these things are going to be very fragile to deal with. We've got one electrode there. We've got another electrode on the back there, which we can then assemble. We can use the tapping wire to connect them, use the solder, and start putting things together. So now what I've got to do is to get the backing board, which will probably be plywood, and I'll just uh, varnish it and do things, do that nice and nice and good, and um, get myself some perspex, or in this case, probably acrylic, to cover the top, and then I'll have the makings of my solar panel. So here we go. This is the way in which we can generate energy at a low cost. I'm looking forward to getting this um, up and running. I've got a little environment to work in today which is useful. There we got the actual soldering iron, a bit of water so I can clean that off, cloths um, over there so I can wipe down the soldering iron, and over here this is a piece of acrylic which fits nicely over the board. Let's see if we can set to work and try and make a panel. The way I'm going to do this is to scrape off some of the white stuff on the back there because that's where the actual contact is, there and there. And then I'm going to use the tabbing wire to make sure I've assembled myself a panel. Um, in accordance with my notes, the top of the cell is the negative terminal. This is the positive terminal. Okay. Now these cells, if they were complete and whole, namely taking up this whole area here, they would be about half a volt, so I'd need something like 24 of them in series to try and generate 12 volts. And we'll just see what kind of power output we can get and what kind of things we can fry with this baby when it's completed. This is not a small board, but if you look at it, it only takes three cells horizontally and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, cells vertically. So let me see if I can get a better angle on that so you can see it. Okay, that's all it's taking up. And yet I've got this massive pile of cells left over. So a board this size could probably generate me, I don't know, 18, to 18 watts, 20 watts, something like that. Okay, just to give you an idea, with this particular solar cell here, I've just used a multimeter on it in the dim light of this particular, uh, you know, shop environment I'm in at the moment. Um, it generated 0 0.02 amps indoors, and at a voltage of 0 0.3 volts. Okay, status report so far. I'm using the pencil eraser just to make sure I can uh, expose the metal so we can start to put the uh, metal tabbing wire on and do the complex soldering bit. I want to do this slowly, carefully, taking lots of little tea breaks in between whiles so I can keep myself mentally fresh and I'm not going to make a mistake whilst I'm doing it. So I'm not at all disappointed with the cells. The cells are good. All right, Secondhand or broken damaged cells work beautifully. The only thing I'm disappointed with is the size of wood that I've got for my, for my first panel. Obviously I'm still learning the techniques, I want to make sure I've got them off pat so I can start building up a whole array of solar panels and I can get myself off grid because that's the goal. I mean you might be thinking to yourself, I mean it's a Saturday afternoon, there must be lots of other things you could be doing on a Saturday afternoon, but basically this isn't actually taking me all that much lo all that much time. I thought this would take an awful lot more time. So if it doesn't take too much time, and it brings me one step closer to getting myself off grid, then basically, it's quite a wise investment in that time. So remember, if you're a DIYer, 
and you enjoy making things yourself and you spend a bit of time getting yourself wood and perspex and that sort of thing together or in this case of course it's um, a clear acrylic then uh, it won't actually cost you all that much more for you to make yourself the occasional panel here and there and it will also help you to charge batteries and slowly reduce your energy bills and get yourself bit by bit off grid. So what I'm now doing is the soldering stage trying to make sure that I can keep the connection going well and I'm testing each um, each group of cells as I go to make sure the current's still flowing through and I don't have to add a different cell in, okay? You can basically start to see that the whole thing is starting to take shape. we got the tab and wire soldered in place. Okay, well basically it's doable but it is fiddly, okay? I've had two cells break on me because these things are so fragile they can break like the moment you look at them or breathe on them they are just so scary in that respect um, but on the other hand you know it is doable we're starting to move on the second line now and so I should be able to start making some headway uh, maybe in one hour or so I'll be uh, feeling confident enough to put the, pre the acrylic on the top okay now there's something which I haven't seen being mentioned at all in any of the how-to videos on making uh, your photovoltaic solar panels and that's how to do the soldering in a way which will not actually ruin your solar cells because they're fragile very fragile and you got to put some soldering on the top of your cells some soldering on the bottom so that the instinct is to flip your panels over you flip your cells over um, what I've discovered is that that's wrong because I've had a fair few breakages now I've now developed a technique whereby I cut off the tab wire first to the right right lengths okay make lots of pieces of tab wire then do the soldering for the underside of each and every single panel that, or, or each and every single cell. Then you turn them over and then you do the soldering for the top of the next cell. So essentially you're reducing the quantity of time which are handling the, cell, the, the cells and turning them over and reducing breakage time and it also dramatically increases how fast you can do your soldering. It's getting really rather exciting now. But I wanted to mention that to you as I've not seen that on any how-to video about assembling your own photovoltaic solar panel. Okay, so here we go. We're almost there, almost home free. I've tested it with a multimeter, so this column of cells plus this column of cells has got a charge going right through it. Those two are connected. Going to finish off the connection there, and then essentially we'll have uh, one electrode up there. We'll have one electrode down here, and then basically that'll be the cell complete. So now all I'll have to do is to glue or adhere the cells to the actual board itself. I'll have to get some good quality, more robust electrodes on the end um, and then cover the top with Perspex and we will have a solar panel. Here we go. As you can see, I have not built it with elegance of appearance in mind, but I have built it with functionality in mind. Got a negative terminal there positive terminal there. I've tested it with a multimeter that all is working and functional so that's good. It's not yet watertight. There's still a bit of trimming I've got to get done but never mind. Uh, apart from that there we go. Perfectly working photovoltaic panel and one day when the price of electricity goes through the roof since I've got enough of these made up I'll be able to turn around and say hey man I don't care because I can make my own electricity at home. Hi there Nick back again uh, on the Get Me Off Grid video blog. Construction of my first photovoltaic panel made with broken cells. What have I discovered? Number one, they're fragile, very fragile. Number two, to avoid them breaking, um, to solder your tapping wire onto the, un the back side, the underside of each cell first. Okay, and then put them together. Uh, I've still got a few, I would say, bit of practice to do with how to construct these things, a few more techniques to build up because I want to try and do at least one of these things a month and make bigger panels and uh, more you know more durable panels uh, panels with higher voltage and higher wattage and I want to be able to get the cells like tessellating better and try and improve my skills with that and there's lots of things that I want to do but as far as you know can the average person on a substandard income which mine is get it together with a bit of savings to be able to make energy? Uh, the answer is yes. 
will that become useful for all of us as we move to a point whereby we can't live on the grid because the grid is too expensive or whatever. Uh, bottom line, yes. Those on a lower income need to have lower income solutions that they can um, basically prepare at home. And that's essentially what I've showed you today, a lower income solution to the provision of electrical energy. Uh, this one's small scale. Um, it hasn't had a full sunshine test yet. It's coming towards the end of the day here, so essentially the chance of me getting a full uh, sunshine test will have to wait until we got full sunshine. But the thing can be made, and you can do it too.